Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 8. In this tutorial we're going to add a little muzzle flash to our weapon firing, so we're going to see a bit of light and a bit of flame. And we're also going to start adding in some UI. So for example when we pick up some ammo it displays on our screen. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed the series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and a whole lot more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, the weapon currently fires. We did that with our C Sharp script last time and that makes things much easier for what we want to do here because we're going to modify that script just a little bit more. So the whole idea is this weapon is going to contain another object inside it which acts as a muzzle flash. So a muzzle flash is when you see a bit of bright light and maybe a bit of a flame when you've fired uh, a bullet. And we're going to use this opportunity to explore materials just a little bit more for a bit of fun. So first things first, let's actually add in this muzzle flash. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an object to this weapon. So let's go to our M9 and let's go to right click and let's take a look. What could we create here? We've got to think logically about what we're doing here. So we could theoretically add a cube if we wanted to, however a cube would render all sides. Sphere would make it go a little bit funny. Um, cylinder, probably not the best. We certainly don't want to add a terrain. Best thing we can add is a plane. Now this is going to look absolutely crazy right now. Plane has appeared there, however if we rotate it, let's say on the X and flip it over, you can see that it completely disappears. So it only renders one side. However, that is fine for us because we're the only ones who are really going to see this right now. So all we need to do is adjust this plane to be in the right position here in front of the end, well, at the end of the gun, basically, in front of wherever the bullet will come out. So here. So we can just shift this up. So let's rotate this on the X by 90. Minus 90 it should be. There we go, so we can see it. And let's just move it into position. So roughly about there, and let's check how it looks. So we need to bring that a little bit more center. There we go. So I'm gonna go to my game view and see how that looks. So that does look like where we can place our muzzle flash which is exactly where we want it to be. So how do we do this now, rather than just have it as a white blob or square? Well, let's go to our textures folder and let's bring in a texture. And you can get this on the website if you head over there, downloads and assets, FPS Battle Horde, under tutorial number eight. Uh, drag and drop into Unity, make sure you have unzipped it. And then let's drag and drop this onto the plane. Now this is not gonna be uh, the desired effect, this is where we'll end up having to play around with what we're doing. So let's just drag and drop onto plane. So we can see already we have a little something appearing, but we have this black around it. We're going to deal with that. Firstly, it looks like we need to rotate this entire thing by uh, 180 degrees on... Uh, so let's reset this to 90. Let's rotate it around. And then let's re-rotate back on the X into the correct position so it's upright. Um, so this should be 90 like we originally had before I changed it to minus 90. Okay, so you should be able to see already how this is happening. You can see that, yep, yeah, we're definitely seeing a flash. So we now need to play around with the material to make this look a little bit more, well, less black around it. So let's go to our materials folder and you'll see it right there. So what we're going to have to do is play around with a couple of different things here and there's multiple ways that you could theoretically do this. You could change it to cut out and work around that way, but it's not going to give quite the same effect that we would want. See what I mean? So we need to, uh, another quick one for example is fade and yeah you could change the alpha but again it's still not quite going to be that effect that you want but it is getting there. So we don't want that. We need to play around with the shader just a little bit. 
Now shaders are something that I I don't really touch upon in a lot of my videos simply because they are very advanced to an extent but there are many many videos out there to help you code shaders but I feel that Unity comes with some quite interesting shaders. So let's play around with some of these on the material as well. So let's go to particles and let's go to um, let's go to additive. And already you can see that is the one we want. But like I said, I want to play around with some of these shaders first. So if you want to kind of skip a, a minute or two ahead, you can probably get to where you need to. Shaders are very useful for where you need to change things visually, like this, for example. Obviously, as standard, it displays the image. However, changing it to what we just had reduces that image itself and only displays everything that theoretically isn't black. So if we change, let's say, to reflective, you're going to end up with the same situation as the original one. Now, although this doesn't look quite look the same, the shader itself is actually doing something. So although the shader is not relevant to this particular game object, it will be to various other ones. So what I would recommend in, in many, many ways is play around with a lot of these shaders because, I mean, the result we've got there from the mobile particles and additive is the exact same result as what we had with the one we previously had. If we go to multiply, you can see that it has the inverse effect. Now that could create a cool effect for something somewhere in the game, you know, for whatever reason, but it isn't the desired effect that we want here. So I honestly would take this time to perhaps pause the video and just experiment a little bit with some of these shaders just to see what you can come up with. Just because there is a multitude of different results that you can see. And although they're not relevant to what we're doing, it's interesting to see what they do. And you could probably find a use for some of them later on in development. So for now, let's head back to our original there. And I guess you can either do it like we've done there or go to mobile, particles and additive. It is the exact same result. Uh, for convenience, I'm actually just going to set this back as particles and additive. So we've got our flame appearing there. What about a light? We want a bit of light to appear. Fortunately, we can add a light to that plane itself. But what I'm going to do is rename and just have muzzle flash. And then within there, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to light and I'm going to add in a point light. Now this can look a little bit crazy because we need to set it a little bit more than what it is. So let's change the color to be something a little bit more yellowy, kind of the same ish as the flame itself. So let's select this little pipette tool here and let's select um, a yellowy orangey kind of color. So maybe that kind of color. So if we zoom out now and move the light around, we're not going to see too much. However, if we change the intensity, you can see just how much of an impact it has. And that is too much. We only need a little light. So let's change that range to just one. And we should be able to see if we go to our game view. Yep, that looks OK. So you take the time at this point to kind of work on this muzzle flash a little bit more, make it look a little nicer than what it currently is, I guess. Um, you know, don't kind of rush what I've done here. The only reason I've rushed, in quotes, this is to kind of speed up this uh, tutorial so we get onto some more fun stuff quicker rather than dwell on pointless things sometimes. So I am now going to turn that muzzle flash off. Off. Perfect. So in our script that we have for firing our weapon, we need to make a couple of changes. And I believe that was in the mechanics object here. And it is in gun mechanic. And we can double click here for our handgun fire. And that will open it up in Visual Studio. So within this script, all we're going to do is we are going to add a variable, which is going to be that uh, muzzle flash itself. And then we're going to add in a couple of lines of code to basically turn it on, turn it off as we fire the weapon. Just to give it a bit more oomph to the game because you'll find in a lot of first person shooters you do have something like a muzzle flash some look really fancy some look nice some look simplistic and i guess you don't necessarily have to use the same um, texture i'm using you can go off and find another one through google if you wanted to so visual studio is loading up now 
And those of you who are familiar with Visual Studio when coding like this, yeah, it takes a little bit of time sometimes. Uh, but on this note, by the way, you may have noticed since the last tutorial, I have changed my project um, from 20, I think it was 2019.1, was it? Or maybe earlier to 2019.3. So as of recording this tutorial, that is the latest version of Unity. And it does look a little bit different, but you get used to it. Obviously, if you've started this tutorial series of 2019.3, you should be happy at this point. So let's add to our script the muscle flash variable. So public uh, game object muzzle flash semicolon. And all we really need to do is we need to manipulate some of these lines of code because we don't want the muzzle flash to appear for the full half second. We want it to appear and disappear fairly quick because that's how they are. They're a flash. So what we need to do is we need to say, I'll do it after the animation actually. We need to say muzzle flash dot set active true and then yield return new wait for seconds and we'll do 0.05f. Now, because we've increased the time within this coroutine by a fraction of a second, we now need to reduce it here by the exact same amount. So rather than 0.5, we need to reduce that by 0.05. So it still adds up to half a second. So we need to say 4, 5 and save. So what this basically means is that we are firing our weapon, animating it. We are showing the muzzle flash and then split second later we are going to turn off that muzzle flash by going muzzle flash dot set active false semicolon resave the script and we need to move this gunshot dot play to here so we're just rearranging a couple of things here to make things make a bit more sense so after we've uh, played the sound we wait and then we turn off that muzzle flash and then we wait again and then we reset our weapon. So save that script, head back into Unity. And now, hopefully, when it's compiled, come on Unity. It's taking a moment there. It is taking a moment. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Now, that was Unity deciding to have a little moment there. So I've had to just restart Unity and just redo a couple of things because the scene wasn't saved. But either way, once we've got our script saved, uh, compiled in Unity, all good. We just need to go on to our mechanics, gun mech, and just add that muzzle flash into there. So if I can drop that, and obviously I've got to quickly rename that because I had to redo because of Unity deciding it didn't want to work. So now what we should have is when we press play, we should be able to fire our weapon and there's our muzzle flash. Perfect. And you can see it only appears whenever we fire our weapon. So you work with that, you build that up a little bit more than what it is, do a little bit more to it, I guess. Um, plan is now we're going to quickly do a tiny bit of UI to get ourselves ready for the next tutorial. Uh, so let's go to, um, let's see, what should we do? Let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's just go on text. This will create a canvas and an event system. We don't need to worry about the event system. The canvas is where all of our UI is contained. So anything we do where we use UI, whether that's an image, whether that's text, or whether that's just a border or something, it always has to be contained in the UI if we want it to be displayed on screen. Now, if we double click this text, we can see whereabouts on screen it will be. It's currently pretty much center. So what we'll do is let's change the color down here and let's change it to white so we can see it. And let's make this text say just ammo and we'll say, I don't know, 12 for now. But let's not have this in the middle of the screen. Let's have this down in the, uh, let's say, bottom right here. So I'm going to change the font size to be bold. Uh, sorry, the style to be bold and the font size to be, let's say, 30. And you'll notice it actually disappears from our little text box there. 
To get around that, let's go to our rec tool and let's pull this out there so we could see a little bit more of it. And now let's also use this same tool to bring it over here. Now this white area that we can see here is the outline of our screen. So anything here means that it will display there because it's inside our screen. Finally, this little button here is called an anchor. And this anchors this particular UI section to the bottom right corner. And what that means is that matter whatever size the screen is, this particular UI will always appear this distance from the bottom corner of the screen. So to show you how that works, let's press play. So we can see this UI appears down there. However, if we pull this game tab out and increase the size, you can see it still appears down here. Perfect. So the inverse of that would be to have it, for example, its original setting, which would be dead center. And I'll show you just how that works. If we have that there and press play. In our normal view here, it seems just fine. However, if we bring the game view out and expand, you can see it appears here because it's relative to the size of the screen. Therefore, it still thinks it has to be here and not down here. So it's always a good idea to make sure your anchoring is correct. So I'm just going to set that back as bottom right and save my scene. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to still work with this UI, but we're going to collect ammo drops. So we're going to make a script that allows us to drop random uh, ammo crates somewhere in the map and we can go and hunt it, pick it up and it will add to our ammo. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.